Hey, how you doing everybody? I just discovered that I have a huge number of Instagram DMs that were sent to me over the last year. And I somehow I missed them. I don't know why, but I did. So I'm going to attempt to answer a few here. And if you did send these, if you happen to be listening to this particular video, my apologies for not... Um, not getting to them sooner. My Instagram game is eh, not so good. Anyway, let's just jump into it. Hello, Sarah. My question is, how many project work should I do for my portfolio if I already have a shopping cart system, social network, posts like dislikes, etc.? The key to your portfolio, if you want to get a job, is to have real world projects. Now, if you're somebody who been watching who has been watching my channel, you know what I mean by that. Go out do two to three little projects for free for local businesses, uh some little, little startup or something just so you can get your uh skills up there in terms of as a developer. Big part about being a developer is actually being able to figure out how to create a code base how to, to deploy a project on the fly. It could be very simple things like install WordPress theme or set up a responsive website. It doesn't have to be complex. In fact, your first two to three little projects, your first projects, they're learning projects, so they should be simple. The whole point of doing this is to A, build your portfolio so you can show pros prospective jobs, prospective clients. Hey, look, I've actually done work for real people. And B, it will teach you the process of actual real-world development. Coding is part of the job, by the way. You have to learn to be able to communicate with people, to be able to get requirements, et cetera, et cetera. Next question, same guy. Please give us business suggestions as I want to move into freelancing world. Currently, a postgraduate student want to earn money from side work. Again, as I said, you got to put up a demo site. I don't know if I said that in this video, but you put up your demo site. You do two to three little projects and then you're ready to go to reach out and start making money as a freelancer. Start with little simple freelancing jobs. You take it from there, which you're probably going to find out in the freelancing world that uh, WordPress, shopping cart integrations, Shopify, uh, PHP, the web, the web technologies, HTML5, CSS3, some JavaScript. These are going to dominate the freelance market. Last question, same guy. I want to know what that excellent level of web developer or software engineer, the picture is not clear. Obviously, English is not his first language. I'm going to try and read this. I, what I want to be in near future and scale my level right now. Okay, so he wants to know what does he need to do to become a great developer? What a key is, again, I've talked about this all the time. You got to get out there in the real world. You got to get out of the tutorials and into the real world. You don't want to be the person who never actually jumps into the coding ring. As I said in the last video, you have to take that leap of faith. All right, so I've answered this guy's video. Excuse me, I've answered this guy's question. A uh, year late, but better late than never. This guy says, hey, bro, how are you doing? I knew on your channel. Thank you for your toots. All right, no problem. Glad I could help. I love your content on YouTube. I am a student of data science and I guess MI, uh, MIS maybe he's talking, machine learning, maybe ML he meant to write, yeah, ML. He's said data science and machine learning. Can I still go with the Air M1 chip, a gig of RAM? So yeah, he's doing data science and machine learning. He wants to know if the Air will do it. M1 Air, which is Apple's new M1 architecture, which is the bee's knees of chips, super powerful CPU and architecture. Everybody else is going to play catch up now. Apple's uh, years ahead. I'm not an Apple fanboy. He says 8 gig of RAM, 256 SSD enough. I would go with 16 gig if you can. And maybe d jump up your hard disk to 500 gig if you can. Hi, Stefan. Is it worth taking paid certificate course in AIML when there are a lot of free material online? Mm, well, paid courses can be better. Paid courses can be better. Links below. Certifications. I provide certifications for schools all over North America in different parts of the world. That being said, certificates are worth this much 
and uh, real world experience worth this much. So it's, it's this much versus this much. So don't take a course because you're going to get the certificate. It's fine. It helps a little bit, but don't take it for value. You take it because the course is taught by a really good instructor. At the end of the day, what makes a good course is not the institution, not this school or that school or this boot camp or that boot camp or even YouTube. It really comes down to the teacher. Does the teacher know what they're doing? Do they know how to code? You got to remember, academic knowledge of a subject, having done tutorials and then re-issuing those tutorials is one thing, but having worked in the field so you know what it's really like to be a developer, that's a huge thing. So don't take a course because of certifications. Take the course because it's a good teacher. Last one. Hey, Stefan, I've been learning web design and web development for the last four months and preparing myself for starting my freelance business in some time. But I had doubt in my mind as... What should I do if a client who has no particular design in mind and expects us to do both design and development for his website? Should I include charges for both design and development for him? Would be really helpful if I get some information from you. If a client comes to you and they need you to do the design work and you want to just concentrate on the back end or the coding, then you can do two things, one or two things rather. You can either use templates or be partner with a designer and uh, of course, you charge for that. You partner with the designer and you farm out that part of the job to the designer. Yes, you charge for that. Whether you're writing code or spending time building a back end, designing a database or doing the CRUD operations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or developing UI UX, it's still time. It still has to be built and charged. So if you want to learn more about how to charge for projects and so forth, uh, my freelance course will help. Anyway, that's it for answering these questions. I think I got to them. There's a whole bunch more, but we'll spread it out over several videos. Once again, if you have questions for me, ask them in the links below, and I'll do what I can to get to the job. All right, we'll talk soon.